to track which ones work. So bit.ly is a link shortener, so rather than having the long URL, you can go bit.ly forward slash a couple of words. And it will also track all the clicks. So where in the world did the clicks come from? England, America. What platforms? Facebook, Twitter, Direct. And what day got the most clicks? So what you want to do when you write an article is put the same article into Twitter, Monday to Thursday, say at lunchtime, but have a different title within the tweet. So we found the best places to go out in London. And then the next day, you won't believe the best restaurant in London. You're going to like this. So the same thing said, different ways. And then you see on here which day got the most clicks. And that's the one you put on Facebook on Friday with some money behind it. I mean, if you have bigger budgets, you can do this entire process through Facebook. But you've validated that this will get clicks. And now it's just a case of scaling it out um, and making sure a lot of people see that link. Buffer is the best social media software in the world. You can post to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google Plus, and Pinterest at once. So you can easily spray something out that goes to all of those platforms um, at the touch of a button. It has really good analytics, so you can just put what days and what times you want the post to go out. It's a really simple light tweet, Deck of Suite. I just find it's a better product. And then it will show you what, how many retweets, how many favorites, how many mentions. So you can see at the end of the week which social media posts did well, and it tends to be surprising once you look at this. And if you want to send the same tweets out, so let's say you have a lot of products with a lot of content, Meet Edgar or Smart IQ will let you to loop updates. We are all subject to base desires. Get laid, get paid, lose weight. If you write about those three things, people will always click. If you can somehow fit any of these things into your content, you will always have people interested in what you're doing. Outreach is everything for the first five years. There don't come a point where you're like, oh, I have too much press, what do I do? You need to be reaching out every day, booking your own talks, booking your own podcast sessions, uh, building your network constantly. Um, it never stops. If you read any of Tim Ferriss' guides, even for books number two and three, he's on the phone for days making sure he's got everything lined up for his launches. Um, it doesn't come easy to anyone. Like These things really need to be hustled. So if you look at where you are now with very little profile, it really takes a lot to get going. So that's why I say don't say no to public appearances, don't say no to podcasts, don't say no to blogs. It, it leads to a lot of things. Like Gary uh, Vaynerchuk put it really well. He said, people ask me, uh, how do I get on CNN? Uh, how do I get on Forbes? Um, I want to reach that massive audience. And he says to them, you know, where were you when uh, a tiny blog came and asked if you could do it? I did every blog that had only 30 likes or only 30 visitors because one of those visitors might be someone at a bigger company. So Gary V said yes to everything on the way up. And regarding uh, the hustle, if you look at what he did on Wine Library, which is his best hustle, because it was at the very start of his arc and he didn't have a following, 20 minutes a day producing the content, four hours a day getting it seen. Four hours a day trying to get shout outs, trying to get partnerships, trying to get people to speak about what he was doing. That was the hustle he used to get Wine Library from absolute zero to millions of viewers. So think about that when you think, how do I get my content out there? Right. There's this one has swearing, um, but I noticed a lot of English entrepreneurs, um, they were not only uncomfortable with selling, they just don't do it outright, uh, and your business will definitely fail if you don't know how to sell. So here are the 10 fucking essentials to online selling. Number one, put the fucking Facebook tracking pixel on your website. Number two, collect fucking emails into an autoresponder drip campaign via Aweber. Number three, have a fast fucking website. Number four, be able to make changes to your fucking website quickly, i.e. don't outsource to someone in Poland if they take two days to get back to you on something. Number five, do your basic fucking SEO. So in my book, Secret Source, A Step-by-Step -Step Guide to Growth Hacking, we wrote a chapter, SEO in a Day. It is a big chapter, but if you do every point on it, and we tell you every website to go to, you will have basic SEO for your site. Um, SEO is the best source of traffic. It is someone searching, I want this product right now. They land on your website, they buy it. Number six, follow up with all fucking leads, new and old, once a month. Um, most people don't follow up with old leads. Uh, they don't realize they have a treasure chest just sitting there. Number seven, acquire a customer with a low cost product and fucking upsell them to a high cost one. It's the number one thing when big companies take me into consult 
the first thing they say is, right, let's get some growth hacks going to get loads of new traffic in. And then I say, do you have an existing customer list? And they're like, yes. And they're like, well, it's going to be 10 times easier to get more money out of the existing customer list. Why don't we start there? And then it takes them a lot less time to double the amount of revenue they're getting from their existing users. Number eight, call people on the fucking phone. Don't hide behind email. Um, no one wants to use the phone, especially millennials, but it's really easy to ignore an email and it's very hard to say no on a phone call. <coughs> Number nine, automate your fucking funnel from start to finish once it works. So once you have a sales funnel, automate all the parts, all the responses, all of the payouts, all of the PayPal. You want to have as little time as possible on it once it works. And number 10, um, fucking mobile first, not desktop. Because you design it on desktop, you presume that's what people are. Over 50% of traffic to virtually every website in the world is mobile first. The only dinosaur that still has more desktop is LinkedIn. Secret sauce is everything. What can you do better than everyone else? Um, this, if I had one piece of advice, this is it. Uh, business is really hard. Uh, it's horrible. It's uh, stodgy, like um, you know, the fat that drips out of burgers. Um, it's very bad for you to run a business. Uh, high levels of stress, your partner hates you, your parents wish you weren't doing it. So if you don't have a secret sauce that makes you stand out, it's just too hard to do it. So find a secret sauce um, that will make you stand out. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, um, when everyone was selling those Lance Armstrong wristbands, there was loads of people on eBay selling them, competing for pennies, all slashing away on price. Um, so everyone was like, wristband, wristband, wristband. And then uh, a friend of mine started selling them as bracelets. No one had bracelets on eBay. Um, just that one term, the exact same product, meant he made six or seven dollars per um, wristband rather than 30 cents like everyone else was. So having a secret source is just about being smart in some way. It's having some little competitive advantage that um, other people don't have. So for instance, when I launched my copywriting agency, our value add was not only will we write great copy, we guarantee to get traffic uh, from an ABC1 demographic because I had over 100,000 followers across my Twitter. Um, this was back in like 2013, 2014 when Twitter was really engaged. So we would just put all the content out there and we were easily uh, outstripping our opponents because they had to pay for all their traffic and we got it for free. So having a secret source is critical. What you want to be is being a blue ocean. A red ocean is when everyone is competing in an ocean and slashing away at prices so that no one makes a profit. So if you think about those wristbands, everyone was trying to compete and no one made, really made much money. So in a red ocean, you um, are competing. In a blue ocean, you're uncontested, like Uber. It, it came from nowhere, it has no competitors. Likewise, Airbnb. Now, competitors come, but they're all so far behind, it doesn't matter. So you want to create something no one else has. And this is why personal brand is so important. No one else can be you. So the more authentically you you are, um, the more you can stand out So for someone else to come into the space. Uh, I was in Los Angeles, and someone said to me, do you realize I could just take your content and do your talks? And I said, that's great. Um, I would just go and make better content and start over. Um, it's called having a, um, an anti-fixed mindset. Most people have this. This is all my knowledge, I won't learn more. Where I'm like, it could all go tomorrow, I would just write a new uh, deck from scratch. Like I write a new talk every few months. So you need to be very confident that you can produce new things that no one else can overnight. Finding your blue ocean strategy. This could be the best slide in my deck if you could just find out how to stand out. Unfortunately, there is only one way to do this. Have your ass in the chair. It doesn't strike you like lightning, it comes by putting in a hell of a lot of work and then eventually realizing something that looked obvious in retrospect. Um, for instance, uh, Austin Allred, my co-author of my book, he started a secondary ticketing website. And pretty much everyone has thought about doing that uh, to make money at some point in their careers. Um, they made a lot of money very quickly. Uh, a lot of people tried to copy them, lost money and left the market quickly, presuming Austin and his friends were lucky. But they weren't lucky. They had an extremely statistical analysis of about 100 data points. They looked what time tickets went on sale on eBay, what seats were selling, what towns were selling. Uh, Austin went to trade shows and spoke to drunk people and found out uh, you know, little secrets, little tricks. 
So they had this secret source spread across loads of data points, which meant they were much less likely to fail than people who were just looking at the surface level. So you have to find a secret source by looking at lots and lots of little things. And this talk, if you think, wow, he has loads of good stuff, like I've looked at hundreds, thousands of things in order to get this down into this one hour of content um, that now seems like I have unlimited secret source. But I've tried a heap of things that don't work and looked at a lot of pieces of software that suck. Um, you can speed this up a little bit by using Clarity. So Clarity is when you can speak to an expert for $1 to $25 per minute. So let's say you want to do email marketing, you could read a few blog posts and try and work out how to do it. Or you could speak to someone on Clarity who has sold $10 million worth of stuff. This is amazing because they will say, okay, use this email provider, uh, don't use this in the title, um, never do this, and then this is how you can grow your list. So you can get to where you need to a lot, of, a lot quicker. Uh, startups are all about speed. That's the real only advantage you have over big companies. Don't waste money on sales channels you don't understand. Uh, social media will not save you. SEO can if you're very good at it. In terms of people who say, we got big off content marketing, uh, yes, they did, but they put a heap amount of money into Facebook ads in order to see that content. For most early stage companies, the easiest way to get customers is public speaking. So how do you become a public speaker? Go on Meetup and Eventbrite. Uh, this is the exact strategy I used last year to get started. I'm now doing a 100 day world tour. So you go on Meetup and Eventbrite, um, tap in your niche, find all the meetups that are active. Uh, so let's say it's fashion, or let's say it's fitness, or let's say it's startups. And then you're going to send them all a private message using Meetup and Eventbrite. And same thing to all of them. Hi, I'm a big fan of your Meetup. Can I come and give a talk? Um, I have a massive network I can invite. Just say that, no one checks. Uh, send that to everyone and then you very quickly start to get invited to talk. About one in four will get back to you because they need you as much as you need them. If you run an events company every single week or every single month, you need new speakers. So it's very low risk for them and high return if you're a good speaker and can bring people. So once you've done this, you can start to grow your profile really quickly. Uh, something that a lot of people agree with me on, uh, charge low at the very start. Um, the default is you charge too high because you think that's what you're worth. No one signs up, no one gives you any money, and now uh, you don't know if it's worth doing. Nevertheless, if you charge too low, then first you're going to get money in the door. Um, you know, your parents, your partner, investors will start to take you more seriously. And it's really easy to increase your prices for new customers. So the ones who took the low number, they get to keep that low number. But all the new customers that come on, they have to pay the higher price. So when I started coaching people a year ago, I was charging £99 for a month's worth of coaching. So that's a really low price for a month's worth of coaching. Um, but that meant I had 19 paying clients in the first month. And of course, in the second month, uh, I doubled my prices, I started to get referrals, and I got very confident with asking for money. And it's not natural to say to someone, you have to pay me this money. So if you're charging a low price, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's only 99 pounds, uh, I'll send the invoice across. And you get very comfortable with that, and then you can start to ask for bigger and bigger amounts. It's so easy to increase your prices but it's so hard when you're looking at a big fat zero and no one signs up. The main sources of more customers. Number one, ask your friends. Number two, upsell your current customers. Number three, ask for referrals. Number four, capture data and pitch, email marketing, which I'm about to get to. Number five, give, 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 then receive. Uh, most people think if you're good at something, don't do it for free. It's rubbish and very arrogant. Um, you need to give so people understand you're an expert, understand that you have influence over a group of people, and then you ask for money once you've proven yourself. So give talks for free, write content for free, put all your YouTube stuff up for free. 90% um, of people who watch any of your stuff will never ever give you a penny, but they spread the word about you, they give referrals, um, and the 5 to 10%, they will always pay. But you have to give out free so that a lot of people reach it. Plus there's peripheral benefits like uh, asking to be on TV, podcast, press. Like when you give a lot out to a lot of people, it comes back to you. How to get, I think I've done enough swearing tonight. How to get people to pay up. Uh, number one, always take the first month in advance. So if we sell a service, you wouldn't pay for a flight afterwards. Number two, offer them a 2% discount if they pay within 48 hours. Many companies have policies meaning they have to take it if you give that. 
Number three, if you work for someone else, my boss is on my back, you know, uh, I don't really care, but uh, I need to get this. And if you run your own company, I need you to pay so I can pay my staff. No one wants to feel like Oliver Twist. Which is the bad one in Oliver Twist? Is it Scrooge? Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to be Scrooge. Um, so, there are many ways to make your customer love you. Um, one is to write to all your current and potential customers right now. Ask how your service is going, whether you're ready to smash it this week, and anything more you can do for them. Most people just take the money and only give uh, when they have their coaching call, when they have that document. More generally, set up in your CRM to give an immediate free gift as soon as anyone buys anything. So for my Kickstarter, which was for live tickets for an event for Harambi, as soon as they bought the ticket, they got an email saying, here are my 12 best pieces of content, including my 2,000 word guide to productivity that will never be released online. So they immediately got a fat bump of free stuff. This reduces your refund rate and massively increases the chances the customer is going to be happy. I care about their results and act accordingly. Uh, surveys have shown the best coaches are the ones who ask, how's your family? Um, how's your sports team doing? Before they get into, right, let's talk about your business stuff. It shows people that care beyond the surface. You are infinitely replaceable by 100 other people doing exactly the same thing. If you connect to them on a human level, there's a much better chance they'll stay longer. Um, one thing I've started doing in order to create a connection is be firmer with clients. Uh, I say when, when they hire me to coach them, I say, you have paid for my attention. That is all you're going to get. If you do not do the homeworks we make on the calls, you don't get to do the call. This makes people actually do the work and uh, for both sides makes it better. Um, understanding their vision and their personal life will massively increase your amount of referrals too. This is everyone's favorite slide in my deck. So this is Charlie app. Type in anyone's email address and it finds all the public information about them on the internet. All their blog posts, all their company news, all their LinkedIn. So I might have a meeting with someone and be like, I like football team Arsenal. And they're like, wow, that's my team. We've got to work together. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but I don't really like Arsenal. I just found out they did and used it against them. Um, this is, the other use case for this is dates. So you get your Tinder date and you say, can I send you an email invite? And they're like, oh, that's kooky. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you get their email, you find out what they like, and then they like you more. <laughs> this is Email Hunter. Type in any company's website and you find all the email addresses of people who work at that company. So if you want to sell to a company or write for someone, you can very easily find this. Uh, my friend runs an empire of cold emailing, and what he does is he has his interns in the Philippines use the Email Hunter Chrome plugin and just look at people's LinkedIn profiles all day and get all of those email addresses. Norbert is another way of finding anyone's email. You just need their first name, their last name, and their company domain, and it will find their email address. If you're doing cold emailing, it only works if you're doing hundreds or thousands. Uh, very briefly, if it's a UK limited company, it is okay to cold email as long as it's about business. Um, but if you only have like 35 or 45 people you're trying to reach, do not do cold emailing, it will not work. What you need is discovery. Go on anyone's LinkedIn profile and it shows you all the Facebook friends you have in common, and then use those Facebook friends to ask for a warm intro. This will convert a hell of a lot better. Or go on anyone's Twitter, it will show you their LinkedIn connections you have in common. So this is a much better way of getting to people so that you can much more likely get through the door. Um, if everyone in here wants to be successful, there's an activity I want you to take in the next week. If you want to be successful, say aye. 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 Come on, London. If you want to do it, say aye. Aye. All right. So I want everyone in this room to do this in the next week. It's called a brain drain. Call up one of your competitors pretending to be a customer. Find out all of the features they have on their product and all the features they're going to build in the next six months and then steal their ideas. It's vaguely ethical, and bear in mind, you just agreed to do it. <laughs> Final section, email is 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter combined. Some of us build big Facebook pages, and now we find out that only 2% of people who've liked our page will see our posts. Some of us build big Twitter and Instagram pages, and now we find out the default view is not chronological, so if you post something, they're looking at the feed, they see it. The default view is while you were away, what got the most likes? 
That is always Kim Kardashian or Harambe the gorilla. It is not your company news. So when you build a house on someone else's land, you never really own it. But when you have someone's email, that's something you have for a very long time. Like, has anyone in here changed their Gmail address in the last five to 10 years? Once you have that, they have a permission to contact you. So it's a fantastic resource, and I've seen companies get acquired just for their email. So Hello Bar will help you capture that. It sits at the top of your screen. It has a free plan, and it's very eye-catching. So you can have a message like, 10% off anything in store if you sign up to our newsletters, or if you're not selling something, we've written an ebook on how to be amazing at sales, or whatever your niche is, and this will cause people to drop their email. No one wants a newsletter, they want value. This is a plugin, so when someone is scrolling their mouse and about to hit the red X, they get this pop up and again have 10% off or a free content, like a free ebook. So it's fantastic for finding out how many people are really interested in what you're doing and then remarketing to them. Sumami also has this, it's a sharing widget, so Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, when people see it, they're much more likely to share. MailChimp is the industry standard, if you've not set up an email mailing list before, it's free for up to 2,000 users. Kickbox will boot out all of your broken emails, so misspellings and people have left the company. The reason this is important is if you have a lot of bounces, you head to the spam bin much quicker. Five steps to getting your emails delivered. Use the first name in every email to make your email unique. Warm up the IP if it's a new email account. So email 20 people you know or 20 email addresses you have and get them to reply to email okay. Um, then there's a much bigger chance that your emails will get delivered because otherwise if a thousand people open it and no one clicks, it looks spammy. Send in small uh, bursts. Don't use the word free, giveaway, or Viagra. That will trigger the spam event. Um, so if you are having trouble getting your emails seen, switch up whether it's text or photo um, and you may get a better response rate. Secret weapon if you have a very small email list, quickmail.io, this will send it from your Gmail to their Gmail so it lands in the inbox not in the promotions tab. If you don't know how to create good emails, this is really good emails.com. You just go on here and you can look up Uber, Lyft and other companies and copy their email layouts to convert real good. Um, Stock Snap and Pixabay will enable you to use photos for free without any attribution, so you can very quickly uh, build up a database, whatever your niche is, that you can use in your content and your email mail -ups. Review, you can drop links and pictures in and it will make your mail out for you. Wavelength enables you to swap email list shout outs, so if you sell weightlifting weights and you sell that strange uh, steroid powder that weightlifters eat, it would connect you because you have the same audience but you're not competing. Connect6 is another stalking tool. Go on someone's Facebook and it will show you all of the other platforms they're on. So uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Google+, but don't use Google+, because no one does. <laughs> email tools. Psychic enables you to see who opens your email. So the best sales technique is to wait people to open your email and call them up. And then they're like, oh, actually, I have your email open now. And you're like, what a coincidence. Well, let's talk. And then get them. Boomerang, send emails later, so if you're doing a Kickstarter launch, you can have loads of emails planned to go out at one time, so you have an explosion of traffic. Your inbox should be a to-do list. If you have a lot of emails, if you have thousands, then use Maelstrom to get the inbox zero. It'll archive everything out of your inbox, um, so you can still search them, but it won't be in there, and it will unsubscribe you from all your newsletters. So it's $10, use it for one month, get to inbox zero, and then delete it. If you're a person who does sales in your company, this is Streak. It's a fantastic tool. Every time a lead emails you or an investor emails you, tick one box and then it will uh, put it into this sales flow that sits inside your Gmail. Are they a lead? Have they been contacted? Are you negotiating? And by doing this, you have a better chance of keeping tack on how your sales are going and reporting back to your co-founder. Now, when you start a company, you're generally a little lower in the power balance than whoever it is you're emailing. So you may email someone and they may not get back to you, but they should because you spent time to create that email. So Rebump is a Gmail tool. If you email someone and they do not get back to you, Rebump will email them every four days forever. <laughs> It'll be like, just thought I'd check you one more time. Uh, an investor once said, there's a 98% chance I didn't see your email and a 2% chance I hate your guts. <laughs> People want to be hustled. If you send the same thing, you have a much better response rate. 
Um, I feel like I'm giving out a lot of secrets, but this is an important one. This is Chart Go. You can create really nice looking charts, just very simply, what's the X, what's the Y, and it will create it. So here's my tip for charts, and this is really important, so everyone listen up. I find they should go up and to the right. It's <laughs> a good joke. Okay. Emojis increase open rates in emails. It probably only lasts another six months before everyone's doing it, but no one expects to see an emoji. So by going on Apple, uh, control, command, or spacebar, you can type anywhere. You can put an emoji in. If you're not on Apple, iemoji.com. Reactiongifts.com is where I get my gifts from. You just type in in their website, I am happy, I am angry, I am disappointed, and it finds you a GIF. So you can drop that into an email. No one expects to see that, and it puts a smile on people's faces. You can also turn any YouTube video into a GIF by putting the word GIF before YouTube. So www.gifyoutube.com uh, will enable you to create a GIF for anything. Typosaurus will find any spelling errors on your website. Trello is your digital to-do list, so it's an amazing project management tool, and at the click of a button, you can create a card, so what's to be done this week, what's to be done today, what am I waiting for feedback on? Great for delegating tasks to other people in your team, but great also if you work on your own, because uh, you don't have anyone to tell you what to do. So if Trello's today's task is clear and you're in box zero, all your work is done. This is Lean Domain Search, as we'll find all the available .coms in the world, there are still millions available. So I was searching for God, and I found main God, mint God, bold God.com still available. So if God is still available, your app idea probably is too. Um, if you're trying to build your personal brand, uh, it's really important you understand the psychology of people. Um, business is about three things, psychology, maths, and strategy. So if you don't understand the psychology, it will not matter the other two parts. The 48 Laws of Power is the best book ever written on practical human psychology. So it contains golden rules like say less, play a sucker to catch a sucker, conceal your intentions, create a grand spectacle, never be predictable. So all of these little things that you can do that will make people be attracted to you. Um, and also when I was on welfare, this by far was the most useful book I read um, of all the business books I read. Because I go to an investor meeting and I'll be like, oh, he's trying to do this to me, I'm going to do this in return. So this is a super, super practical book that will help you understand people. Uh, sadly, it also works in personal relationships, like girlfriends or whatever. Um, on a less a moral note, how to win friends and influence people. Uh, it's a fantastic book that trains us out of our natural selfishness. We all think we're good people, but we're not really. We eat bad food, we voted for Brexit, uh, we spend the whole day on Facebook moaning about things. We're not really good people. Um, when other people are talking, all we're really thinking is, when is it my turn to talk? So how do we and influence people will enable you to see what you're doing and stop it. It contains golden rules like compliment the other person. Never contradict, complain, or condemn about the other person. Smile. Listen. The sweeter sound in the world to the other person is the sound of their own name. When you do these things, people will like you a lot more, and you need to be liked. It's very important because you can get a lot more done, and people will go a lot further for you if you're liked. So this book will massively help you achieve that. Finally, the best book ever written on PR is Trust Me, I'm Lying. So PR can be hacked. Uh, we've written a massive chapter on it in our book. Uh, but here's one strategy you can use. Go on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. There are people who will write anything for $5. Get them to write blog articles about your company and then create 10 fake Gmail addresses and then email um, all of the small but influential blogs in your niche. Um, say you may want to cover this or a few people are mentioning it. Once they cover it, get those same 10 fake emails and email the bigger blogs and the Huffington Posts. Um, you, at this point, you want to say, I can't believe you haven't covered this. Everyone's talking about it. Huffington Posts have to write like 1,500 things a day. So if you can get their attention and they can see other people are writing about it, um, then there's a much better chance they will cover it. And from there, you go up the chain to CNN, AOL, and Forbes. It sounds far-fetched, but if you look up Trust Me Online examples, a lot of companies have done it. This does not mean it's easy. You still need a good product and you still need a good angle or it doesn't matter how many people you email, um, but it is possible because the internet is all about theft. So I'm, the yeah, Fiverr, yeah, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. -E and the book's called Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday, but our book is better, obviously. 
Um, I'm looking to meet interesting startups, founders uh, who are looking to grow. Uh, I'm opening a coaching mastermind in the next few 